Next, we have uh, speaking with us today on how social selling can help align your sales and marketing. We have the founder and creator of Anita, I'm sorry, Wandesman Consulting. And so, Anita, if you'll make your way up and please give her a round of applause. So good to have you, Anita. Thanks so much. Thank you for the handoff. Okay, question. I'm going to wake you up, peeps. Who's in sales? Hands up. Oh, a handful. Okay, who's in marketing? The majority of you. All right, even though you're interspersed, do you think you can still get along? Yeah? And that's what I'm here to talk about. The hopefully seamless way that marketing and sales can get along. But a little bit of context about social selling and my background, because it is relevant uh, to set the context for today. I spent about five and a half years at LinkedIn in a brand new division called Sales Solutions that started up about five and a half, six years ago. And this was a startup within a startup, and we offered a premium solution to salespeople because LinkedIn found out through their analytics that there are seven times more salespeople on the LinkedIn platform than there are HR people. So now LinkedIn is starting to turn into a social selling platform. So my expertise was showing key accounts, global accounts such as SAP, Oracle, IBM, how they can scale social selling within their organizations. Has anybody heard of Sales Navigator? Yay, handful, excellent. That's not what this talk is going to be about. I'm going to be talking about just social selling in general. So, is this sort of a familiar scenario? You know, we've heard about the feud between sales and marketing. It is kind of a cliche, but the reality is that it is kind of true, right? 60% of sales and marketing professionals believe that misalignment, that's misalignment, not alignment, between sales and marketing can negatively impact financial performance, yet they are not getting along. And even the Content Marketing Institute in a recent survey found out that half of companies, marketers, are admitting that they are not aligned with their sales teams. So essentially, if I took it, take a look at this room, half of you are aligned with your sales team, half of you aren't. How many of you feel that you are aligned? Yeah, see a handful. It's a starting point. So here's the common challenge, and let's see if you uh, have come across this yourself. So does this sound familiar? So sales says, hey, marketing, bring me some leads, right? Marketing says, we give you leads, but you don't follow up on them. I hear some laughter in the audience, probably rings true. And then sales says, yeah, but those leads suck. And what they really mean is that you're bringing us leads that are not qualified. Not necessarily quality, but just that they haven't been vetted. But that's all changing now as buyers do their own research online, come to their own conclusions about the products and services that they perhaps want to purchase. So here's the reality in today's market. So marketers, would this be true of you? You generate approximately 25% of leads? Yes, no? Much higher? Well, that's an excellent marketing department. I mean, even at LinkedIn, our marketing department generated between 25 and 30% of leads coming in. So then the question is, where does the rest of the 75% of the leads come from? Well, that has to come from your own sales team. So enter social selling.
And that fits in with the new reality of the marketplace, where the sales process has changed. So as B2C consumers, think about the last major purchase that you made. It could be a vacation, it could be a car, it could be appliances. What did you do? Who Googled? Who asked people for reviews? Who used Facebook and said, I need recommendations for, right? All of the above. And that's what B2B buyers are doing as well. So, by the time they get to you, as in a sales rep, they are more than halfway through their buying process. So, what that means for the marketers in this room is that content increasingly is becoming more important to fill that gap between sales and marketing. If sales reps are going to be social, if they're gonna be posting content, they need some great content to amplify the great work, the great messages, the great videos that you have generated. But what is social selling? There are a lot of definitions, and in fact, not everybody calls it social selling. It can be modern selling, it can be digital selling, but the definition that we used at LinkedIn is that social selling is about leveraging your social networks, not just LinkedIn, but it can be any network where you will find your customers to find the right prospects, build relationships, and ultimately achieve your sales goals. Now, we talked about technology in the first session. We talked about bots. We talked about AI. We talked about blockchain. But the process of selling, it's all relationship-based. So I think sometimes we forget that we're dealing human to human, right? Not human to bot, not human to blockchain, or you know, whatever those combinations are. But I think too often we forget to put the social back in social selling. Ultimately, it's about relationships. People buy from people that they know, that they like, that they trust, that they feel familiar with. So this is how marketers are going to be able to, or sales reps working with marketers are going to be able to uh, fill that gap in providing the rest of the 75% of leads. So what are the benefits of social selling? Well, they're pretty numerous, actually. Um, so it shortens the sales cycle, why? Because buyers are already doing their research online, they're informed, they're making more, you know, more speedy uh, decisions. Um, your sales reps are gonna better understand your prospects and engagers, uh, engage with them at the right time when they're engaged in social listening. Your customers, your prospects are giving clues to you and leaving breadcrumbs all over the internet, all over Twitter, all over LinkedIn. They're posting questions, they're making comments, queries. They're giving you a clue into what's important to them and what's on their mind. So social selling is also about social listening. You can probably benefit more from listening than you can from pushing out your message. How many of you agree with that? Yes, absolutely. It's a great way to spot new opportunities for lead gen as well. Your customers are self-identifying themselves. Hey, I'm doing research on marketing automation. You know, who's, who's, got, who's got some uh, solutions for that? Or I'm researching options for uh, energy efficiency products, you know? So that's one way to keep your ear to the ground, uh, social listening. So these are benefits to the organization, but social selling has uh, benefits to the individual. So if you are a subject matter expert in something, you're posting, you gain visibility, then that's a way to attract attention and ultimately inbound leads. Uh, who is from Grant Thornton? Somewhere, somewhere over here. Yeah, I was working with uh, a major a consulting firm out of New York, and one of the members of their team belonged to a LinkedIn group. And he was part of a, like a mergers and acquisitions group. And uh, somebody in the group posted a, kind of a complex question about mergers and acquisitions and taxation, something like that. And this partner uh, responded to that query in the group. And 24 hours later, 
that turned into a customer. So, you know, it's not about pushing your expertise, but it is about contributing thoughtfully to conversations. So that if you're looking for that tax expert, that, that mergers and acquisitions expert, oh yeah, I saw him, I saw her in that LinkedIn group. So all of these benefits sound great. Is it achievable? Is it just fantasy land that we can all just get along? Do you think it's attainable? Yes? Yes, I'm hopeful as well. And here are some uh, suggested solutions on how you can get alignment with sales as well as marketing. Now, these tips come from you know, my experience in dealing with large global accounts, but the great thing about social selling is that you can have a sales team of 15,000, you can have a sales team of 50, you can have a sales team of five, you can have a sales team of just one. So, all, uh, so social selling is not necessarily uh, com complex for the people in this room, but, but it can be a little bit difficult for maybe uh, pure sales reps to get their, their heads around. So about this uh, kind of territorial um, sort of conflict between sales and marketing, really, I mean, let's just drop the egos, let's drop the, I found the lead, no, I found the lead, I'm delivering better leads, no, I am, right? Let's forget about that and then just focus on the customer. Let's do right by the customer, right? And we have this mantra at LinkedIn that selling is a team sport. That message came from the senior sales leader. We all take a role in the sales process. So it means that that alignment has to start from the top. Vice President of Sales, Vice President of Marketing, CMO of Sales, CMO of Marketing, Directors of Marketing, right? They need to be aligned at every level of the organization and focusing on the customer. Number two, this does not sound intuitive at all, speaking to a room of marketers, but it's really important to get the buy-in of frontline sales managers. So, a question is, when was the last time that you sat in on a sales meeting? Has anybody done that recently? Not many, few of you, kudos to you. But for those of you who haven't, speak, speak to sales managers, speak to sales reps. You're gonna get some great information from them. Talk their language, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that later. The other sort of, uh, you know, problem and challenge is that sales doesn't really have a budget. Sales has a budget to take clients out for dinners, right? They do the fun stuff, to buy tickets for clients, right? That's not where the serious budget is, although that's a fun budget. You know who controls big amounts of spend? Everyone in this room. You bet that the vice president of marketing has a much big, bigger budget than the vice president of sales does. So you are holding the purse strings. How do you get on the radar of your sales team? Speak their language. Hey, I have a program. It's gonna increase your top line. Okay, I'm listening, right? So, um, and also, the other thing is that when marketing implements a social selling program, your sales reps really aren't gonna listen to to marketers, I'm so sorry to say this, but this is what I've seen over and over again. So you need to get that buy-in from frontline sales managers. And when I say frontline sales managers, I'm not talking about the VP, yes, you need the alignment, but it's the individuals that the sales reps report to, right? On a one-to-one, on, -on, -one, on a weekly basis. Because they're not gonna listen to you, they're not accountable to your KPIs, they're not accountable to your quotas, they're not accountable to anything that you're doing but they are accountable to achieve their own quota because it's their frontline sales manager, their direct supervisor, that is gonna hold them accountable to achieving their goals. So that's, that's really a secret. Nobody ever talks about the frontline sales managers, and I have to say that um, 
You know, with, with many of the clients that I dealt with, you know, Oracle and, and SAP and IBM, this, this, this was the biggest challenge. You know, there was alignment at the top, there was groundswell from the bottom, but still it was that meaty middle that we had to work on. And so this is, this is the secret to crack the code. It's not sexy, but it's reality. Tip number three. View social selling as adoption rather than a campaign. So marketers, I know that you do this. You say something like, uh, okay, well, now we're gonna be kicking off with a, a three-month uh, inbound marketing uh, program. We're gonna launch our rebrand over the next nine months, right? It's time-driven. It has a beginning, it has a middle, it has an end. Social selling, doesn't. Don't think about social selling as being a campaign. It starts, you launch, you train, you educate, you get buy-in, but that keeps on going day after day, year after year, so that, it, so that it is ingrained as a practice within your sales team. And when I say sales, it's just, um, you know, sales navigator licenses or social selling is not just the domain of sales reps. Um, it's the domain of marketers here as well. So, you know, I kind of use that interchangeably. So you have a role to play as well. And the only way, really, to get adoption is to ensure that it's incorporated in a sales rep's daily routine. And as part of the training, you know, I, you know, I made sure that, you know, we built in kind of, you know, 15 minutes a day on LinkedIn for social listening, for posting. So it's really not all that complicated to do. So it's ongoing. The most challenging thing in any organization is to bring in a new tool and change. I never like to use the word change management because that's just way too scary, right? When you think of change management, oh my God, how long is it going to take? How much training do I need? But it really doesn't have to be painful, again, if you stress to sales reps that you can achieve your sales quota. I have a tool, I have a process that can help you do that. Strategy number four, share success stories. Uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a story. I was working with a sales team in Dublin, and they worked for Vodafone, and their inbound sales team was called uh, Red Edge, so kind of the most progressive part of the organization. They were really transforming their call center from a cost center into a revenue center. So they took away all of the low-level kind of customer query. So I don't mean low-level, I mean that's really important. I just meant non-sales kind of functions. And they turned these uh, individuals into social sellers. And one of my clients, his name is Felix, just took to social selling, right? Followed all the advice, did it regularly. And he was just a rock star. And so I said to the company, you know, you really got to either videotape Felix, you got to write a case study, and that's exactly what the company did. Because at the next meeting, at the next sales meeting, okay, so, you know, what deals do you have in the pipeline? Oh, Felix closed a 500,000 euro deal. And how did he do that? Social listening. He saw that one of his prospects uh, had merged with another company, got in there for first mover advantage, that's what social uh, listening does in social selling, and was there before any of his competitors were, and he closed the deal. He is a rock star. Now he is kind of the uh, internal ambassador, uh, helping to turn other individuals at Vodafone uh, UK into, uh, into social selling experts as well. And who doesn't like a little bit of recognition, right? Okay. So it doesn't always have to be monetary, but a kudos from the vice president. I always suggested to my clients, hey, get your sales VB to write a recommendation for that uh, rock star uh, sales rep on LinkedIn. All about, recommend, uh, all about recognition. So whether it's a case study, whether it's a video, whether it's recognition on a call, all of those uh, tactics work. And also, this is really going to feed into helping to prove the ROI of 
say, of, of, your, of your marketing campaigns. Um, marketing Sherpa uh, recently ran a survey, and do you know what the number one priority of CMOs is? To prove ROI of marketing campaigns. So now when you've got ammunition and you're getting budget, trying to get budget for next year, and you've got these success stories, you've got the metrics to prove it, that goes a long way in making sure that you've, you're going to uh, get your budget for next year. Tip number five, speak each other's languages. So again, sit in on a sales meeting, have coffee with, with at least two sales reps, maybe per week. They love to talk, people in sales, don't they? <laughs> right? So do you know the sales lingo? Churn, average dollar deal size, conversion rates, what's their whale, what's their quota? Those are all, that's all the terminology. It's not click-throughs, it's not, it's not eyeballs, it's not you know, all, of, you know, all of the marketing jargon that we use. Use words like, I'm going to increase your pipeline, I'm going to increase the sales velocity, I'm going to reduce churn. Those are the words, you know, just kind of reposition. And talk about what you do in just in a, in a little different way, and that way you're going to get that alignment. Because the more that you know about sales, the greater your credibility, the greater the buy-in, the greater the acceptance. And of course it goes without saying, Measure, analyze, rinse, repeat, improve. There's one thing that social media is great at is you know, data analytics. We're overwhelmed with data. That's not the problem of getting data, but it's to tell a compelling story. What does the data tell me? Let's get actionable insights. LinkedIn, like all of these tech companies, they're data-driven companies. What story does the data tell that can help me sell social selling within my organization? And sometimes I saw organizations measure the wrong things. I was dealing with one a company that had a, a call center. Do you know what they're measuring? Mean time, uh, mean talk time in a call center. Who wants to talk anymore, right? They should forget about that metric and instead come up with other metrics about, well, how long are you spending on social media, tweeting, uh, social listening, right? So, you know, the, the, the metrics uh, have to change as well, and you can help to influence that uh, out with the old metrics and in with the new. Now, for Sales Navigator, uh, you know, we had very specific metrics, number of leads saved, number of accounts saved, in-mail response rate, things like that. Um, and also, who's familiar with the social selling index? Everybody loves gamification. LinkedIn.sales dot com slash SSI. Everybody has a social selling index score in this room. So the bottom line is, okay, well, what's the payoff? Spending all this time, all this money to enable your marketing teams, your sales teams to socially sell. So what's the payoff? Does social selling work? Well, that is the $64,000 question. So these stats come from LinkedIn. Sales reps who adopt social selling create 45% more opportunities. Pretty compelling. 51% more likely to achieve quota. And those that adopt social selling, 78% outsell their peers who don't use social selling. Because every sales rep you know, they don't want to be at the bottom of that leaderboard. There's no, no way. Nobody likes to be at the bottom, right? But I want to know what she's doing. I want to know what he's doing. What's, what's the secret sauce? What's different? Social selling. I had the pleasure of working with our second largest client, um, Google Social Selling and SAP, and they are just all over the place. I worked with them for four years, uh, starting off in Toronto and then uh, following them uh, when I was based in, in London. Um, SAP is located in Germany. And if there was ever a company that was a poster child that really has mastered social selling, and they're always improving, is that SAP has really, has really nailed it. They are the rock stars of social selling. Uh, uh, top sellers have a quota achievement of over 
And there's more. There's alignment at the top of the organization. There's alignment between sales and marketing. There's alignment um, you know, and a bubble up from, from the bottom. Um, they've got uh, dedicated people uh, to, to market, to train. Uh, they have trained uh, close to 10,000 sales reps within their organization. So it's pervasive. It's a way of doing things. So uh, take a look at some of the SAP uh, success stories. OK, so here's your mission. And I can take maybe a couple of questions. Get aligned. I want you to partner with sales. Do I have your promise? Put your hand, right hand on your, on your left heart. Say, I will get aligned. Yes? Come on, work with me. I will get aligned. <laughs> because I want you to get aligned, just like Sherlock and Holmes and Peanut Butter and Jam and Mulder and Scully and Kermit and Miss Piggy and Amy and Sheldon. So those are famous pairs in media. And I want you to be aligned and pair up with your marketing or uh, with your sales organization. So can't we all get along? And the answer to that, of course, is yes. OK, so that's it. I've got about three minutes. Any questions? And where is the box, Jeff? We got it right here. All right. Any comments, questions, queries? Are you launching social selling? Where are you along in your journey? Do you have any successes? Where are the B2B people? On the way. <laughs> you. Um, so, you know, we talked about, um, you've spoken a little bit about aligning sales and marketing through social media and social listening and whatnot. Now, I know this is, seems like an old question, but I'm going to bring it up because in B2B it's still an issue. How much of uh, desktop versus mobile plays a factor in, in and what you were saying, especially considering in B2B, I think 70 to 80% of the audience is still on desktop and not spending as much time on social media. Yeah, that's huge. Absolutely. Yeah, I didn't mention that here. Yeah, so LinkedIn has a mobile app. Sales Navigator does as well. Yeah, so whatever programs that you launch, you know, make it easy that they're uh, mobile friendly um, so that, you know, content can be shared. But yeah, so important because sales reps do not spend their time at a desk on a desktop. It's all mobile. So uh, yeah, very important. Anyone else? Is there a is there a hand? Any B two B friends out here? Don't leave me hanging. Oh, over there! Yay! Okay. And while we're waiting, is there a third question? And then we'll oh maybe that's the last one. So B two B. Yay! Yay! Thanks for um, stepping up. We thought Woo. about, um, you know, allow the reps to spend time on LinkedIn and um, use that social selling. But you know, sometimes a sales rep, and then it's a computer. People can get so in a computer, and sometimes their hands wander off somewhere, and they start using different browser for different things. So, how do you implement that? Uh, that kind of focus on using LinkedIn to expand your network? How do you properly implement that so it's efficient, no waste of time, maybe trackable? Yeah, uh, that, that's the age old problem. But the way I look at it, I mean, if, especially when you're in, we're in B2B, I view being on LinkedIn as investing time really rather than wasting time. There aren't many cat videos or Sudoku challenges on LinkedIn, <laughs> so you're kind of safe, right? But really, if a sales rep choose to waste their time on social media, you know, they, ne they need to deliver on their quota, right? The quota speaks all. So if you're not efficient with your time, then you know, then you're out. So it's as simple as that. The numbers don't lie. But yeah, you have to give them the tools and, and they can be responsible in managing their own time. But, uh, but yeah. Okay, so want to make sure that we end on time. It is 11 on the dot. Happy social selling, everyone. And go hug a sales rep today. <laughs> okay.